Hey folks, today's I'll be covering some basics on what you should be thinking about before you start queuing for your next rank game, and hopefully it'll be something that'll help you improve your win rate a little bit. For reference, I'm currently 6.2k MMR, so that's whatever, rank like 1500, and these are just my thoughts and my opinions, but hopefully some of you will find it useful. Alright, quick TLDW for those of my audience who only listens to the first minute of my video or whatever. Make a hero grid, pick stuns, don't count on yourself, have fun, win the game. Good luck. So currently in pubs, the current pick meta is as follows. First phase, you have both supports picking. Second phase, it's the off lane plus either the mid or the carry. And obviously whoever didn't pick in the second phase picks last. This is what you're going to see in most games and something that I do highly recommend. And that will be like the framework that we'll be going off of. So, with this in mind, depending on what role you play, and because of how this pick order works and the relative importance of your hero, obviously cores being a little bit more important on which ones you specifically pick than supports, what you'll be thinking about will depend a fair amount depending on your role. So I do want to start from there. Uh, personally, I highly recommend queuing for the role queue in ranked games. Uh, currently, I'm just playing all roles for the weekend to get some role queue games for my streams for the rest of the week. But I highly recommend just playing a single role if you can, as it will give you less variance in your games, and it lets you focus on more specific ideas. And again, I realize every game can't necessarily be like this, but if possible, I highly recommend just picking one or two roles and sticking to those, and just play those over and over and over until you get like a decent idea of how this works. That is, of course, until you run out of role queue games, or if you want to go play Classic, or even for those very high MMR folks, where you'd only queue Classic and Rates, but I don't anticipate those folks to find too much useful information from this video. So, next, let's start from the pick screen. So, this is the default pick screen that we all see when we queue into Dota, but for those who are not aware, you actually make your own custom ones, and I highly suggest you do this. For me, I have a couple different ones depending on my role I'm playing. Of course I have support, and of course you can divvy this up however you'd like, depending on your own personal playstyle, your hero pool, your hero puddle for some of y'all. For me, within the support category, I highly enjoy having a melee and ranged list that I separate them by, as I really don't have a I'm really not a big fan of having like two melee supports or two range is fine. But specifically two melee supports can often be quite a big issue draft wise. So I split these up this way. So the fellow support player picks a me melee hero pretty early. I'll, uh, I have some options in mind what else I can pick to complement that. And then have pause fives split up into just heroes that I'm comfortable with. And then like these save heroes, which combo or are particularly meta currently. I'm also a little bit guilty of having a cavern core <laughs> or cavern crawl list. And then I also recommend having like a band's hero list, so you have some heroes that specifically counter what you enjoy playing. I just recommend that you have these, so you have much less to worry about and much less to think instead of being like completely overwhelmed by all the heroes that exist in Dota 2. So organize, organize it however you'd like, but highly recommend having a couple different uh, screens. Let's uh, let's get right into supports then. So as a support, you want to be picking the first phase. And I think the beautiful part of that is that you don't see anything. You have no idea what the enemy team is going to pick. You don't really know what your team is going to pick. If possible, I recommend typing in the chat being like, hey, what do you guys want to play? Or hey, can you all just hover over the hero you're interested in? Often you'll find that there's some very obvious combos that you can then pick. Something classic like a Jug Crystal Maiden or something. Again, because there's so little information, you can just think about it beforehand. And I think that's the most important part. I think the singular most tilting thing is when people don't have a solid idea on what hero they want to play, and they just waste everyone's gold. Because the time just click, 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 and those gold comes falling out of your pocket. If you're queuing specifically support, or if you're queuing all roles and there's a chance to get support, I highly recommend that. 
Again, if you have a support pick screen like this, then you can just be like, oh, whatever, whatever I'm in the mood for, I'll just look here and pick one. If not, just like have an idea of like what types of heroes you want. And while you do that, you do want to somewhat complement the other support pick. So this will depend a fair amount whether you're player uh, pause four or pause five player, because often you'll find that pause fives will pick like a ranged hero, which often enables you to pick a more roam heavy position four heroes, which is my personal preferred playstyle. Um, but there are a couple concepts that you want to keep in mind, and you want to make up for what your the other supports missing. So. Number one, uh, ranged and melee supports. You don't necessarily need to have one of each, but I highly recommend against having two melees. I can often make your drafts incredibly difficult. Two, uh, every lineup wants stuns. So if your other support player picks some here like a Phoenix, Enchantress, Pugna, whatever, you want to be really careful that you pick a stun, because stuns wins games in Dota. And that's especially true when you're behind. Uh, it's like this few ways I can like get kills, get pickoffs, and like come back into the game. Playing a game without stuns, while it's completely possible, there's plenty of pro games where that's happened, it's not preferred. And I think ease of execution goes a really long way. So stuns, very important. The other one I personally keep in mind is wave clear capability. And then, because I'm primarily a pause 4 over a pause 5 player initiation. Again, doesn't matter too much, but wave clear is pretty important, especially if you have like a undying or something uh, as the other support who doesn't like hitting creeps. But often you can't really make moves around the map when all the creeps, all the creep waves are being pushed into your towers. It's incredibly obvious if you like go for a smoke gank or are just missing off the map. And again, it's not necessary, but if any of y'all follow like BSJ's smurfing guide, you'll find that he really puts heavy emphasis on this, picking these heroes with wave clear, as it enables you to get more items and farm than you would otherwise, and just like enable plays to happen. So I highly, highly recommend that. Another thing you can keep in mind is like the initiation component or the roaming component. Again, it's not necessary for you to have this in your team, um, but if like your off lane is already hovering a certain hero and you're the pause four, you can be like, huh, do I really want to play like a more lane centric hero like a Lina or a Rubik? Where you really try to dominate the lane, or do you want to go for a Clockwork, Tiny, Earth Spirit? These type of things I can gank the mid lane and uh, try to set up opportunities in the early game that way. All right, on to off lane. My favorite core role, for sure. Uh, I think one of the most important things as an off laner is to make sure you don't counter yourself. Now, there aren't too many supports that will like hard counter your hero. There are some cases, and there's also cases where the enemy team doesn't necessarily pick two supports in the first phase that you're able to see. But you have some information, more information than the supports did. So some obvious examples I can give here is like Pangolier, Enigma. These heroes that are the ult reliant, more so Enigma in this case. Uh, you don't want to pick this hero into like a Warlock, a Rubik, Silencer, any of these that have really easy ways to stop your ulti from going off. I think that's incredibly important. Uh, as you, like, you just make your game so much more difficult. And I do want to note that this issue happens even at my level. Like, I had someone pick Enigma on my team into a Winter Wyvern, who can just curse and goes through BKB. Um, so the number one thing is like don't counter yourself. This comes also in part with the ban. So this helps if you have a specific hero in mind. If you're like, oh, I want to play X, Y, or Z. I want to play Tide. I want to play Timber. I'm going to ban out Ursa, Faceless, Jug. Um, if you're afraid of like a weak laning hero or whatever. Um, you should also think to like change your hero depending. Like I think when you actually get into a game, it's really important that you like scroll through and see what heroes actually got banned. And you might be like, oh, uh, Anti-Mage got banned out of the blue. Maybe I feel more comfortable playing Sand King now. Um, and of course, there is a level of knowledge and understanding that needs to come with what heroes are good when. Uh, this helps a bunch if you do only play a handful of specific heroes where you have a better understanding of what heroes counter it. If you don't have that strong of a grasp yet, or if you're looking to pick up a new hero, uh, a thing you can do is just go on Dota buff and just uh, sort by hero counters, so you at least have like a general idea of what types of heroes your new hero that you want to play 
doesn't fare particularly well versus. And while it might not be possible to always like pick a very strong or the perfect heroes that they can't counter, that's okay. As long as you have some idea and start picking a little bit more smartly than just like going to a game and just randomly picking a hero just cause. The other thing I recommend you keep in mind is that there are a couple meta heroes, uh, at least in this current meta, that you can pick into basically anything and you don't particularly care. Uh, Mars, Axe, DK are solid most games, regardless of what the enemy team is going to choose. Doom also kind of falls into the category. Of course, the swole change from patch to patch, and also your comfort level, and I also highly recommend that like if you're going to ranked, don't pick this hero just because you know it's good if you don't have that much practice on it. Like, go spam some games, let it become a comfort hero, and then add it to your hero grid and go from there. Otherwise, when you're choosing a hero, I think one of the big parts, at least for me, that I think about is initiation. If you have a pause for hero, one of these melee heroes we saw before, or I even have the, in the little 3.5 category, Clockworks, Earth Spirit, Tusk, Tiny, these heroes that just get a blink or have skills that innately go in, then you're not as hard pressed to have like a blink stun initiation hero. And again, this is not required every game, every team comp is going to be different, but often recommend, especially for those who are a little bit newer to the offlane world, to just like want to pick like a blink stun initiation type hero, a centaur, sanking, mars, slardar, a lot of these heroes will do quite well. Um, and that's especially important if you don't have one of these initiation heroes. If you do however, you get like a little bit extra flexibility in what you want to play. So maybe you want to go for a nature's prophet for a little bit more of a carry style offlaner. A Night Stalker that doesn't necessarily provide hard CC but has a really strong silence to get on top of like an anti maid or a Winter Wyvern in the back lines, an Oracle, so on and so forth. The main things that I think about, or like the way I personally divide the offlane pool, is initiation, uh, tower damage or tower holding. So these are the very tanky heroes that can sit in front of towers, like Sand King, Tidehunter, Timbersaw, uh, Lane Dominator. And you'll notice a lot of these have some level of overlap. So this would be like Viper, OD, OD although less popular, Timber Saw in the right matchup, and then Team Fight. Again, each game is going to have a little mixed bag of what you have, but you should keep in mind of like, what does your draft currently have? What do you feel like it's lacking? As I'll also kind of dictate how you play the game itself. Full disclosure for the next two positions, pause one and pause two, mid and safe lane. These are positions that I don't play particularly often, so I might not be able to give the same level of like insider knowledge or details or whatever, but I can still give you a little bit of my thoughts on these specific roles. So in my personal opinion, I feel like it makes much more sense to have the mid pick in the second phase. Because of water runes and spawning at 2 and 4 minutes and bounty runes at 3 minutes, oftentimes we find that a lot of these bottle heroes will not lose lane that hard. So it doesn't matter too much regardless of like what lane you go into. And worst case scenario, you get these runes, you're able to get region up, you can farm the small camp. This lane like snowball thing is not that big and the current patch doesn't really expect mid laners to move around too much. Uh, I know in lower brackets especially, the laning phase tends to go on for a little bit. So I guess it's especially true, but at least on my level, it's either there's like a very opportune ganking power rune that spawns, such as a haste or an invis, depending on the hero. Sometimes even a DD if you're like a tiny or something, um, where you'll see the mid laner either like TP into fog into the safe lane, or just like walk to the side lanes and try to get a kill. But other than that, often it's that you wait until you get your first big power spike. Um, it's either is level 6 or after you use your ult to level 6 be your first item. So on a hero like Puck, it's like once you get Witchblade, Pangolier, it's Maelstrom, Tiny. Tiny moves around a little bit more than some of the other heroes, but even just like max level of Q and W does a lot of damage. Uh, Zeus Aetherlands, 
lash with boots of travel, so on and so forth. It's a little bit more of a farming role currently, which again, I think there's more power to just pick your character in the second phase. It doesn't matter. Allow your core to get a solid lane matchup. Uh, there are a couple things that you want to keep in mind. Again, this does rely that you have a fairly decent idea about what your hero does and what complements it. Uh, hero like Puck, Storm, these other like very highly mobile heroes are their biggest interaction is with the number of stuns and instant disable enemy teams. When it's particularly low, or there's a lot of like projectile stuns, like Sven Stormbolt and such, then Puck can be an incredible pick because you're able to dodge everything, you bob and weave through fights, cast a bunch of spells, do a bunch of damage, you're unkillable. Like those are the ideal games they pick a hero like Puck into. Uh, less ideal games will be ones where the enemy team has like a lion or a shaman, someone that has like an instant hex that you can't react to. Even a Rubik who has instant spells can be really annoying. Um, and while it is possible to pick into these heroes, there's kind of like a give and take as those heroes might just be food for Puck. Um, these are things you want to keep in mind of like, oh, how easy of an engage am I going to have? Um, so while I don't think it's particularly important to have an incredibly deep mid hero pool, as you see here, like mine is quite small and like I barely even fucking play Tinker. For me, realistically, it's just Puck and Pango and Tiny whenever I get this roll. Um, that's often enough. Uh, just understanding your timings and being like, huh, well, if they don't, they're lacking hexes and such, if they have, again, this lack of hard lockdown, I'll often pick Puck. Uh, Pangolier also takes advantage of this. If they have a lot of very squishy supports and they don't have any saves, I might pick a Tiny. Uh, Pangolier also feels pretty good into like melee heroes, where they're often like in the middle of the fights and your role is bound to be more effective. If they're particularly low on mobility or catch, uh, there's no like... I was gonna say Spectre, but if you're picking second phase you wouldn't see a carry often. But let's say you're picking last for sake of argument and there's no like Faceless or Spectre or PA that can easily get on top of you. Zeus can make a lot of sense. We just like do a ton of damage from the backline. Um, this point also you might find that you can combo with like your other core pick. Let's say your offlane picks like a Slardar or something or it has this negative armor component. And you'd be like, go more all in with it. Pangolier has this minus armor and the lucky shot. Or you might want to go a TA or something and enable a very fast Roshan. There's a lot of options here. Um, again, it's going to depend on what your preferred heroes are and how you want to play them. The biggest thing is don't pick yourself into counters. And ideally, I think in this current patch and how it's being played, you should pick the mid laner in the second phase. But again, that's just me. And lastly, the carry. So. I think carry can go two ways. Personally, I think having a last pick can be quite nice, especially the meta trends a little bit more towards having the safe lane pick in second phase, and just having a positive lane mat or a positive late game carry matchup can be enough to win games. If you're like, you can pick a Spectre into like Anti Mage or something, or pick uh, some Diffusal Hero into Medusa, and so on and so forth. There are some very obvious. I don't want to say obvious. There are some very skewed carry matchups where you can really take advantage of the fact that you have last pick. I highly recommend. Also, if you wait till last, you're able to see the entire lane. So hopefully give you a decent start. Because the idea at the end of the game, well, lanes aren't everything. But if you lose all lanes, most of the time you don't have a game. So conversely, if you win every lane, pretty nice. Um, I do want to mention that most patches, there are some like very stable core heroes that exist, so not so much the heroes I have listed here. Again, this is my own personal hero grid and the heroes that I'm personally comfortable with, but even then you'll see that they're mostly Dorito level, they don't play pause one very often. But heroes like in jungle particularly effectively in early, this patch, Luna is incredibly effective, a Juggernaut, which is able to lane against most things and also jungles pretty effectively. These heroes do particularly well, and these are heroes that I'd say even more a second phase pick if you're looking to pick it. If your mid laner does want to pick like a little bit more of a niche hero, like say you want to pick a Tinker or something, 
Again, it depends a lot on how you want to combo with your team. Maybe you'll find that you have a lot of damage and you can just pick a last pick void that you combo with. Like if you have a Tinker or a Zeus, so on and so forth, a lot of heroes just dumping damage. The other strong consideration, and probably the biggest part, is looking at your lane support. If you're last pick, or even if you're just second phase, you know what your support has picked. So it's up to you to like dictate how the lane's going to be played. If your support picks a hero like a CM, which is relatively aggressive, wants to go in, wants to cast a lot of spells, and then you pick like a pretty weak laning hero like a Spectre that just kind of wants to sit back and see us, and it's kind of on you for like setting the pace of that lane. The lane is now dictated on how you want to play, which is like a blitz slower, sustain, get CS. So I highly recommend just trying to think a little bit of like, okay, how does my support want to play? How is this hero ideally played? And how can I combo with that? But again, if you, if you can give yourself a winning lane, there's oftentimes combinations like Crystal Maiden and Juggernaut. You don't really care about what the off lane is or their pause for hero is. There are also very specific pause for heroes that you want to be weary of. A lot of these pause for heroes are the ones setting up ganks. So we we'll take a quick look again with heroes at. So if they have like a tusk or a clockwork, heroes where if you don't have mobility and carry, you're actually very scared of them. So I might not pick Juggernaut into like an axe, a clockwork, some R A P K B piercing disable. I might be more inclined to pick like a Spectre, a PA, a Void, these heroes that have that level of mobility. So if I get hook shot, if I get uh, ice sharded in, I don't particularly care. I'm just gonna be like, bye-bye, I'm gonna time walk or Spectral Dagger over it, so on and so forth. So don't counter yourself, it's the biggest thing. Just make sure you have a game um, and also realize that draft isn't everything. Well, a lot I'm saying here is I don't want to say super straightforward, but just like I want to give another access to think about what do your heroes want to do? What is your team necessarily missing? Do you need a frontliner? Is everyone on your team rather squishy? Do you not have like this go and pause three hero? Like do you have a nature's offline? Then maybe you want to pick a Wraith King or a Bristleback or CK to kind of like initiate or tank spells. Think about like what they want to do and how you can best enable it. And at the end of the day, Oftentimes, regardless of like if the enemy team has like a better draft or anything, it's only a small portion of the game that influences. And if at some point you have enough gold and resources and a decent some understanding of your your power spikes, you are able to win games. So like there's plenty of games where like you can play for like a later game timing and a faceless or a specter or something, where you're like at some point I will carry and win the game. Or some other hero where you're like okay maybe I'm hard countered, but. If I have 5,000 net worth on the enemy carry, it doesn't matter. I'm full item ahead. I'm able to kill them. I'm able to get Roshan earlier, so on and so forth. Yeah, so within the realm of carry, again, I'm sorry if my the information I'm able to provide for these two specific roles is kind of lacking. It's like frontline or not, level of mobility, and then like core matchup if you see the enemy pause one hero. And yeah, other than that, hope you all go out, make some hero grids. Try to think a little bit about like, oh, what heroes do you want to be playing? Hopefully you do take my advice and maybe play less roles if you're playing several roles and hopefully that'll help you out. So with all that being said, hopefully when I edit this all together, it doesn't end up being too long or too rambly or you feel like you actually learned something. If you want to support me, feel free to drop a like, follow, subscribe, whatever. I'll be dropping a link to my Twitch channel where I stream most days of the week between like 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. or so-ish Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, feel free to do that. Uh, I'm also offering coaching and I'll probably be clipping some of those together and not uploading the full sessions on YouTube in the future, but just like smaller sections that actually provide more tangible information for more general audiences. And if you're interested in that, feel free to drop a comment in YouTubes or stop by my Twitch channel or whatever. Um, I think that's about it. Also, if you have any interest in you wanna, I recently made a guild in Dota. If you have interest in joining that, feel free. Uh, I also have a Discord that I can leave in the description box below. And yeah, hopefully y'all have a good time and hopefully y'all like learn something or other. Yeah, and just another something to keep in mind. Uh, for the next time you queue into ranks. Yeah. Good luck. Happy climbing. Take care, y'all. And uh, happy 4th of July.